I know this for sure. Nothing says you're comfortable with being by yourself than not needing to be like a boss. So look, the first things first, when it comes to becoming more desirable, the, the most important thing to remember, and that's something that everyone needs to understand is that you have to present yourself the right way. That, that this habit, dressing good, eating well, and exercising, those three habits, those three habits. And if you keep doing it over a year, like for example, if you keep eating well, exercising, sleeping well, right? And, and dressing well, all of those habits will make you more desirable over time. Scientific research has provided evidence on how getting enough sleep can contribute to appearing more symmetrical and attractive. One study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology found that attractiveness is closely linked to symmetry. The study concluded that humans perceive symmetrical faces as more attractive because they indicate genetic fitness and good health. When we sleep well, our body undergoes a process of restoration and repair, including the regeneration of skin cells. This can lead to improved skin texture and a more even complexion, which in turn enhances the appearance of symmetry. Additionally, sleep deprivation can cause various negative effects on our physical appearance, such as puffy eyes, dark circles, and dull skin, which can detract from our overall attractiveness. Furthermore, Dressing well has been shown to significantly increase attractiveness. A study published in the British Journal of Psychology found that wearing stylish and well-fitting clothes positively influenced perceived attractiveness. When we dress in outfits that fit well and flatter our body shape, it can enhance our physical appearance and boost our confidence. Dressing well often involves paying attention to grooming and personal hygiene, which further contributes to our overall attractiveness. Research has also shown that taking care of ourselves by maintaining good hygiene, grooming our hair, and practicing proper skin care can enhance our physical appearance and leave a positive impression on others. Plain and simple, right? Um, and these things, you, 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 you have to emphasize it because people do judge you based on how you look. For example, me, I used to dress very like a skater, right? For example, like that was like my style. I was more of a, I don't care how I look, it's how I am. I, I did not know how much people actually judged me based on my appearance. I did not know that. Until all of a sudden I started dressing better. I started, I, I was dating this girl who was a, who was in a fashion. And she was always telling me, Delexis, why can't you do your hair? Delexis, why... You should wear this, wear that. This will look good on you. Button it up. The Lexus, iron that shit, man. The Lexus, the Lexus. And over time, what she said to me internalized. And I developed a, and I started dressing better. And I'm going to tell you something, man. I remember I would go to to, <laughs> to restaurants and, and or even stores. And people wouldn't give me that look they used to give me before. The look of what is he doing here? Now, people might say, oh, let's get to... It's because of racism. Not entirely, okay? Um, as soon as I started dressing better, all of a sudden, people stopped looking at me when I was in stores. People didn't think I was going to shoplift. Um, all of a sudden, women, in, in my case, women sometimes would approach me. Every all, all of, As soon as I started dressing nicer, and I would go to Manhattan, at 10% of the time, I would meet a girl randomly as I'm doing things. Like, like I could almost like, it's almost like, consistently if i go 10 times one girl i'll meet a girl that will be interested in me on a date and it, the only thing that changed was that i just started dressing i put started putting more effort and i started working out and that literally changed it so man or woman working out getting in shape the most important thing right um because unfortunately people judge you based on how you look people so it is what it is. Um, so that's one thing. Now, there are better channels to go on YouTube that, that will help you with that. But that's just what I observed. The next thing is slow movement and relaxed talking. The slow movement, right? So that means when you move, you move a little slower. Me, I have a habit of moving a little quick sometimes, right? I'm a highly energetic person. So this is something that I work on. And speaking fast is my negative habit. So I developed a practice of just being more consciously aware of not moving fast not responding fast not doing those like fidgets you know what i'm saying and just being more relaxed you know like speaking in a more relaxed way taking your time moving slower 
when somebody calls you out, when somebody calls your name, you like I always tell you guys, you don't just look fast. You hear your name and then you look. Like you have all the time in the world. Slow movement and relaxed talking. Relaxed talking. You just relax your muscles, right? You just talk in a relaxed way. Like you barely, like you just woke up and you're barely awake. Um, when you're tense, your octaves go high and your voice gets a little bit more tighter. And it's because you are nervous, right? Your muscles are tight. So also this will also be tight, right? And you might even have like a fixed facial expression because you're tight. Your muscles are tight. So it's like a tightness it, all around your body is this tightness. <sighs> relax. Just relax your face. Relax your eyes. Relax your voice. Relax even the way you're sitting. Relax everything. And all of a sudden, you just look more self-assured, more comfortable in your own skin. Next thing is not needing to be the center of attention. I know this for sure. Nothing says you're comfortable with being by yourself than not needing to be the center of attention. I remember, I know this, I notice this in myself because I'm very observant of myself, but I don't know about you, but every time I see someone who has friends and could be hanging out with people, but they're choosing to eat by themselves or read by themselves or do something by themselves, to me, I, I, I observe myself giving them credit in my mind. I'm like, yo, this person, this person really likes themselves, right? Um, when somebody willfully chooses to be by themselves, but also just the quality of being okay with being by yourself. What that says to me as a person, it says to me that you're somebody who's actually, you, you have self-esteem. I don't I, like, I don't know how you guys interpret it, but the way I see it is that people who are okay being by themselves, there's a reason why they enjoy being by themselves. There's a right. And the way that I see it is that they like themselves. And if they like themselves, most likely I'm going to like them. Like those are assumptions that we tend to make. Whenever, at least for me, whenever we see someone who's comfortable be, being by themselves and smiling, and not only that, but when they're by themselves, they're not scanning the room. They're not, you're not reading a book, somebody passes and you're like, hey, look at me. No, you're, somebody passes, you're still reading. An explosion happens, you're still reading, right? Your folk, your attention is exclusively in whatever you're doing. That says to people, that you're comfortable with being at ease with yourself. And that's attractive. No matter who you are, people. So it's not about, so it's, it's also not being, not needing to be the center of attention because what happens when you want to be the center of attention is that you tend to do needy shit. You tend to do things that, that call attention on you, but make people resentful about you. You tend to dominate conversation. If you're a woman, you'll dress way too provocatively to the point where other women won't trust you. If you're a man, you'll talk way too much to the point where women will think you are rude and, 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 and vulgar. Wanting to be the center of attention will always, and I mean always, cause, cause you to project and send signals of insecurity onto other people. And the sad thing is about this is that you're not going to be aware of it because you think you're doing something right. Because you think that you, it, it actually works. But you don't, you're not aware of how much you're turning people off. Like, the funny thing is, in my experience, is that the less I try to be the center of attention, the more it tends to happen. Right? That, 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 that shit, the less funny I try to be, the more people laugh. Like, sometimes I say, say things, and I'm like, why is that funny? <laughs> like, that wasn't funny. <laughs> and that's because people react to your sense of security. People enjoy people who enjoy being around themselves. Like, it, just observe people who who you know are comfortable being by themselves and notice how you see them. It, it'll, it, it'll, it'll always be a positive quality. The next thing, the next habit is having a hint of femininity and a hint of masculinity. If you're a man having a hint of femininity, if you're a woman having a hint of masculinity, I am telling you people, the most desirable people for the opposite sex that I have that I have ever seen in my life were men and women who projected the opposite, who projected hints of the opposite sex. People, honestly, it's almost like a raw 
animalistic energy. It really is. Like, that's the best way I could describe it. People who master this, people who, who, men who are comfortable with their femininity and express it, and women who are comfortable with their masculinity and express it. And when I say express it, they express it in one, their movements, two, what they, what they wear, and three, I'm trying to think, what they, the habits they, they do. Those people, I've noticed a lot of people gravitate to them. It's almost like a like a like a sexual animal. Like I don't know what it is about those types of people, but they tend to be magnetic. Think about any successful celebrity, and like the most attractive male celebrities. A lot of them have a hint of masculine femininity, and the most attractive female celebrities. A lot of them had a hint of feminine of masculinity. Like honestly, the most. I go to, I, I, I've been going to school for many years. The most attractive person, the most attractive woman I've ever seen in my schools that I've been to, she she was actually almost like a, she was a feminine woman with a, with a feminine body. <laughs> but she you wouldn't tell that she has, she's packing heat because she, she, she sometimes dressed like a man. Now she looked like a woman, right? But she had this energy of a man, but, but then you saw that she was, 100% a woman in every way possible. And I remember people, I remember all the guys in my school. That was when, back when I went to um, community college. A lot of guys were into that girl. And she was actually a twin. And it wasn't that she was like exceptionally beautiful. It really wasn't. But my God, did she gravitate people towards her. My God, were people obsessed with those girls. Right. And the next dude was uh, that I remember was also in that community college. This guy, like, kind of, I thought he was gay. I'm not going to lie. Like he, that dude would look at me and I would think, OK, this dude really wants to fuck me. Like this dude, the way he's looking at me, he really wants to fuck me. And he's a friendly guy, but <laughs> like he, he didn't want to fuck me, people. The dude had the look, had had eyes, had Ted Bundy eyes with the, with a mix of Rasputin. Like. But then he looked like he looked gay. But then when you talk to him and you actually really, really, really listen to him, he's he's not gay at all. But dude, that guy, I, I I've talked to multiple women who slept with that guy. Like they're obsessed with that dude, obsessed. And, and, and I'm like, when these girls were telling me these stories, I'm like, what? Him? They're like, yeah. And I'm like. That was 10 years ago. I was like, Yo, what the fuck? I, I didn't comprehend it, to be honest with you. I didn't get women. So I kind of like, I kind of, I, I kind of did it. I kind of didn't get it. But now that I think of it, there was just so, they were drawn to his raw masculinity. They were drawn in because of the feminine. They were like, like behind this feminine exterior, there was a, a masculine beast. And he used his femininity to draw women in. And it worked. It fucking worked, man. I've never seen anything like that in my life. And he wasn't exceptional. Like, he wasn't that tall. He, I mean, it, it, you saw him and you didn't think anything. Yeah, he had crazy eyes, like in a good way. But you know what I'm saying? But when you, when you actually talked to him and looked at him, the, the accessories he would wear, and it's, it, it's like, yo, like every guy should observe this guy and learn from him. Because he got it right. He got it. That dude was so confident. And the reason why I, f I felt he was confident was because he was so comfortable with wearing shit that women would wear. And it's not that wearing shit that women would wear is, is attractive. No, it's, it's the audacity, the, the comfort level. And to men, men don't understand that. Men, um, uh, most likely you would see this if you're a man and say, that's gay as shit. And I get it. But imagine not giving a fuck. That's what women find attractive. I don't give a fuck at factor. You know? So that's one thing. The next thing is not having vulgarity take this from me people stop cursing have even if you are a vulgar person on the inside keep that shit to yourself it offends more than it draws in all right let's just keep let's just say that um the next one is having skills being good at something you put me a woman who 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 is attractive right boom she's beautiful Give her the skill of dancing and that she could dance now. All of a sudden, she's way more beautiful. Give her the ability to shoot a jump shot. All of a sudden, that girl is way more beautiful. Give her the ability to dribble a basketball. Give her the ability to hit it, to, to, to sing. Give her the ability to play an instrument. All of a sudden, that woman is more attractive. If you're a man, 
have a simple man. That's one thing. Give him the ability to to play an instrument. That guy's more attractive. Give him the ability to play the saxophone like I have <laughs> behind me. I don't play the saxophone. All of a sudden, you're more attractive. Give him the ability to play the drums. All of a sudden, you're more attractive. The ability to dance. All of a sudden, you're more attractive. The point is, having a skill makes you more attractive. Develop that skill. Develop whatever the hell skill you want to develop, but develop it. And don't just develop it by yourself. Develop it around people. Me, I go art. I, I do art. I could have learned art by myself, but I learned art around people. Because learning around people is more advantageous. Like you, it, but also that that's the whole point of learning around people. Is that when you learn around people, you actually get to meet people, and then you become more social, and you get to know more people. And the next thing, which goes with long in, in line with that, is doing things with other people if you hike by yourself hike with people and the reason why this is an attractive habit is because hanging around people people will recognize that you're attractive this phenomenon is known as the cheerleader effect or the group attractiveness effect it was first popularized by the tv show how i met your mother and later confirmed by scientific research the cheerleader effect suggests that people are perceived as more attractive when they are in a group compared to when they are alone this happens due to the way our brain processes visual information. When we look at a group, our brain tends to average out the features of individuals in that group. This means that less attractive features of one person may be offset by more attractive features of another, leading to an overall increase in perceived attractiveness. Another reason is cognitive bias. When people are in a group, it's harder for our brains to compare them to each other. Instead, we tend to compare the group to other groups or individuals, which can make the group as a whole seem more attractive. In a study published in Psychological Science, researchers found that participants rated pictures of people as more attractive when they were presented in a group than when they were presented individually. This supports the idea that our perception of attractiveness can be influenced by the context in which we view people. So the next time you're going out, remember the cheerleader effect. You might just seem more attractive when you're with your friends. If you're online all the time, you're not going to be you're not going to be treated with the same level of attractiveness that you actually possess. So it's much better to do things around other people. If you if you a dancer, join a dancing group. If you're a hiker, join a hiking group. If you like to work out, join a CrossFit group. But the point is do it with other people. The more you do things with other people, the more attractive you're going to come across to people. It's just that simple. Because they get to see you. The next one is not chasing those people who are not putting effort. When you hang around other people, make sure that if they're not showing you any effort, if they're not showing you that they're into what you're offering, walk away. Make sure that if they're not putting the effort, if they're not showing you that they like you, walk away. It, it, and this is something that I've had to learn. That leave people alone. I am like a golden retriever and me, I had to learn to leave people alone, all right? And a lot of people who watch my channel are really nice people. But unfortunately, some people cannot have a hard time taking in signs of negativity when they like the person. You get what I'm saying? And unfortunately, you have to watch out. Sometimes people will not like your affability. Sometimes people will not like your friendly nature. And the most important thing is that is once you understand that is not to take it personal. That's the most important thing because if you take that personal, you're gonna internalize it, and you're gonna and you're gonna make it part of your reality. Don't take the fact that some people don't like you personal, and don't chase after them because if you take it personal, you're gonna start chasing them. Nothing looks, nothing's is more of a turn off than somebody who doesn't know how to take a hit. And the next habit that will make you more attractive is developing a meditation practice. If you want to learn about this, you can purchase my course, Emotional Mastery. Or you could go to, to a meditation retreat go, called 10-Day um, um, Vespasana. Go to dhamma.org, D-H-A-M-M-A.org. There you can sign up for free 10-day silent meditation retreats. But the point is, is that developing a meditation practice will make you more desirable, will make you more attractive. It'll enhance your masculinity. And it'll express your femininity. It'll combine it in a way that will look succinct and fluent to who you are. It'll make you more relaxed. It'll like it'll get it'll take away the desire to be the center of attention. It'll slow down your movement. It'll relax the way you talk. You won't speak with vulgarity, right? 
you will actually you will learn the patience to learn a skill because meditation is all about sitting and developing patience you won't get triggered into chasing somebody else because through a deep meditation practice you learn to dissolve those negative emotions away ladies and gentlemen developing a meditation practice is the most important thing you have to do to become more desirable and the reason why i say this is because even the parts that i talk about about getting in shape Developing a meditation practice will give you the, the, the discipline, will give you the, 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 the willpower to be able to work out and think long term enough to keep working out, to keep going, to not give up. A meditation practice is the most important quality because the more you do it, the less insecure you are. It's just that simple, people. It's one of those few things in life that is very corollary and, and, and it, it consistently scales up no matter what. So develop that meditation practice, right? Read the power of now if you don't have if you don't have the time or money to go to the meditation retreat, which is free, or purchase my course. And do what that says, and I can promise you, you will see results. Anyways, if you guys ever want to work with me one-on-one, go to mindfulattraction.org. Check out my online courses, which you'll see at the end of the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys haven't purchased any of my courses, we have a special bundle deal for everyone um, so that you can purchase all of my courses, meaning you could purchase the Psychological Game of Attraction, Natural Chemistry, and Nice Girl, along with all of the bonuses. Originally, if you purchase everything without the bundle, it'll be around $400, around $500, to be honest with you. Um, but right now, if you guys purchase it, with the bundle, you guys will be able to get all of these courses, Psychological Game of Attraction, which is for women for women who are single, Natural Chemistry, which is for women who are in a relationship, Nice Girl, which is a course on assertiveness, along with all of the bonuses, Social Mastery, Practical Mastery in terms of how to master anything, Social Mastery in terms of how to master your social skills, and The Laws of Human Nature, wherein I, it's part of the Robert Greene book club I used to have. All of these naturally like i said it's 500 now you get it at 394 which is essentially 20 percent off everything but if you guys want to purchase a more affordable bundle you guys can purchase the bundle without the bonuses and that will be at two um 224 rather than the 300 well, rather than the 293 that you guys would naturally purchase it so you could purchase it with the bundle or without the bun uh, um you can purchase it with the bonuses or without the bonuses. Um, it's all of the work that I put in the last four years, um, in the last five years actually, all of the research that I've done, and this course, rather than watching all of my videos, and because they, they could be random and you could sort of like lose the big picture because there's just so many videos, you guys get all of the content condensed in a course. Trust me, people, if you guys purchase this, you won't regret it. Um, if you haven't purchased it, hopefully this will push you towards it um, because it's something that I believe in and everyone who, who's purchased my course um, have been satisfied with it. And if they didn't like it, I always give my money. I always give their money back. I have never rejected a refund. All right. So purchase it right now. Click on the description down below where it says pur purchase the bundle. And I'll see you guys inside.